Hello and welcome. In this episode, we're going to be talking about latitude and longitude, mapping the surface of the Earth. Before we get started, please grab your packets, open to page 3, and let's begin. So we're studying Earth science here. And one of the challenges in Earth science is being able to communicate an individual location on the Earth's surface, whether it be the location of an active volcano, uh, a threat of an earthquake, the movements of a storm, the location of a mountain range, or whatever. We need to be able to communicate specific points on the Earth's surface. To do so, we need some sort of a coordinate system. Otherwise, it's just too difficult to pinpoint spots. So our coordinate system is made up of two types of lines, which we're going to be discussing in detail. These include latitude lines, seen here, showing your distance north or south of the equator, and longitude lines, seen here, showing your distance east or west of the prime meridian. If you put these two types of lines together, you end up with a coordinate system. Now, a complete coordinate system allows you to pinpoint the exact location of any spot on the Earth. Grab your sheets and let's take a look at longitude. Now, longitude lines measure your distance to the east or west on the Earth. Zero degrees longitude is known as the prime meridian. And this is a longitude that runs through a city called Greenwich in England or in the UK. Now, the line of prime meridian could have been drawn anywhere on Earth it happened to be drawn in Greenwich because that's where the astronomers and scientists and mathematicians who devised this system were working. So they chose to make their location the starting point. It has no scientific relevance beyond that. So our lines of longitude are going to tell us how far to the east or west we are of the prime meridian. Longitude lines increase to the east and west of the prime meridian. And the highest line of longitude is going to be 180 degrees. Notice this does not have an east or west after it because there is only one line of 180 degrees longitude. It is known as the International Date Line. It is on the opposite side of the Earth from the prime meridian. So every 15 degrees of longitude is going to give us a one hour time difference on Earth. And this is a number we know because we know that the Earth is spinning at 15 degrees per hour. And so every location separated by 15 degrees will result in a one hour time difference. And one of the key things to keep in mind is that the further west you go, as you travel west, time will become less or earlier. So every 15 degrees to the west you travel, it's going to be one hour earlier. As you travel east, time does increase or get later. As you travel 15 degrees of longitude to the east, it's going to get one hour later. And this is the basis of our system of time zones. They're all based on longitude lines. So just to sum up, longitude tells us how far to the east or west of the prime meridian we are. You see these diagrams here. These show you what longitude lines look like. On the left is if you're looking at the Earth from the side. So you notice longitude lines run from the north pole at the top to the south pole at the bottom, and they meet. They converge at the two poles. They kind of create slices like you would get in an orange, peeling an orange, you would get these sections. Longitude lines are not parallel to each other. They run north and south and they tell us how far east or west we are. Now if we tilted the earth on its side and looked down on it onto the north pole, you would see lines like you see on the right. This is what the earth would look like from above and these are your longitude lines. But longitude on its own isn't good enough. We need latitude as well. So let's talk about latitude a little bit. Latitude is a measure of your distance north and south. It tells you how far north on the Earth or how far south on the Earth you are. And it all starts in the center of the Earth at a line known as zero degrees latitude, which has a name called the equator. Latitude lines increase to the north and they increase to the south. When you travel north and south of the equator, your latitude gets higher. The highest lines of latitude are going to be 90 degrees north and 90 degrees south. And these are known as the poles, the north and south pole. So while longitude increases to 180 degrees, latitudes only go up to 90 degrees. Now in the northern hemisphere, we actually have a method for locating ourselves, or at least determining our latitude, using the stars. 
Now we're going to learn a lot more about this in class, but I want you to get in your notes for now. In the northern hemisphere, you can determine your latitude by measuring the altitude or the height of a star called Polaris. It's also known as the North Star. Here we see what latitude lines look at. Now notice these are horizontal lines. They're parallel to one another. They're often thought of as latitude because they look like the steps of a ladder carrying you north to the North Pole or south to the South Pole. If you tilt the Earth on its side and look from above, latitude lines look like concentric circles. It looks like a bullseye, almost. Now, if we were to travel on the Earth, as we move from one location to another, our longitude and our latitude will change, and it's important for us to be aware of how it will change. Let's start with our longitude lines. Remember, these are the, the lines that run from the North Pole to the South Pole, and they tell us how far east and west we are. So, your longitude will change as long as you're traveling to the east or to the west. However, your longitude stays the same if you travel directly north or south. So if I start in Mamaroneck and I travel directly north up towards Canada, as long as I'm not going east or west, my longitude will remain the same. It's only when I travel out west or to the east that my longitude will be different. But what about latitude? Now, our latitude will change as well, but it's in the opposite way. My latitude will change if I go to the north or south, but it will remain the same if I travel east or west. So again, if I travel north into Canada, my latitude will increase. The number will get higher. If I travel south, it'll decrease. But if I go directly west out to, say, Chicago, I'm not changing my latitude, so my latitude is going to remain the same. So there's our brief introduction to latitude and longitude. In class, we're going to be talking about this in a lot more detail. See you soon.